In this particular section, we're going to start with our tangent lines. And as we saw with the tangent circles, using the tangent tool is pretty easy, except when we have to do lines. Now we could have set up the object snap to, do auto, to, to automatically pop up tangents, but typically you're going to find that you're going to work with the center point. Notice the green circle around that center point of that circle. So for, for myself to select a tangent, I have to do a couple of steps, and it requires the ability to chew gum and hop on one foot. Realistically, you have to be able to hold the shift key down, and when you hold the shift key down, notice the little button, the little finger button push that it shows up on, near, next to the uh, crosshairs, and then right mouse click your mouse. When you do that, you, you bring a pop-up with all the different object snap tools, and of course one is the tangent tool. It's only good for one selection though, so we pick the line command, it's asking us for our first point, we want the first point to be a tangent to a circle. So that first point needs to be tangent to an upper circle. The second point, again, shift, right mouse button, tangent, because remember it takes two points to draw the line and both points need to be tangent. If I only do one as a tangent, the next one's going to go to the center of the other circle and you're going to say, that didn't work out very well, did it? So, there we go. We picked the tangent, we've created that line, and we hit enter. We have one more to go. Pick the line command, shift right mouse button, tangent, pick the outside edge, shift right mouse button, tangent, pick the outside edge. Really simple to do right mouse click, choose enter. We now have the structure of our drawing complete. Now we just need to trim it so we can see what the final shape looks like. Let's choose the trim tool and I'm going to select all the orangish yellow lines as trimmable objects. Could I window around everything? Yeah, but then I've got all the center lines that will also be used as cutting edges with that. And let's say I, I inadvertently pick one of these. How do I deselect it? When you select objects, you're left mouse clicking. And when you want to deselect an object, you hold the shift key down. That's right, that's the same key we use to pop up with the right mouse click. It's the same key that if we hold the shift key down and I reselect an object, it deselects. So the shift key with the right mouse button pops up the object snaps. When I hold the shift key and do a left mouse click, it deselects an object that has been selected. Pretty cool. So even if you pick something that you don't want to select, hold the shift key down, reselect it, you're all set. Works with the window capability. So if you want if you windowed around a, an area and it's like, oh I really didn't want to grab that area, hold the shift key down, rewindow deselects it all. Pretty cool. When we're done selecting objects, we always right mouse click, and now we have to select what we want to trim. So I call this the nibble process, because we're going to nibble away at the structure of our drawing. So kind of remember this arc that's in here, because I'm going to nibble this arc, and oh, i got to nibble another piece off. When I go back and, and do this circle, Notice how it stops here? Remember, the other circle came and, tr and was a cutting edge for here. So I need to nibble this, and then nibble that away. And then all the internal arcs get nibbled away. And there we have it. Right mouse click, choose enter. There's our exterior shape of our object. Pretty neat. Let's go ahead and draw some circles. We're going to go back to center diameter this time. Pick the lower one, intersection, diameter is one inch. Right mouse click, repeat the circle command, pick it, but what happened? It's no longer in diameter mode, it's in radius mode. What happens is if you right mouse click and choose the center or the circle command, it always goes back to radius. So if you want to use diameters, you need to go back up and pick diameter each time which I just did. Now we've got this octagon in the middle. Now how are we going to create that? That's a series of 
eight-sided. It's got lines. We know that the only distance is three inches, but I don't know the size of every single segment. Well, typically under the rectangle command, there is a polygon command. So you'll find that rectangle and polygon kind of work hand in hand here. So I'll choose polygon. And when it says how many sides is my object? Eight sides. Where is it located? Where is the center? Well, we know where the center is. And then it asks a really interesting question. Is the polygon inscribed or circumscribed? Be careful on your pronunciation. In most cases, polygons are circumscribed, which means that the polygon is outside of a circle. And I'm going to do a quick demonstration as soon as we're done drawing this to show you what we're talking about. Inscribe means that the radius distance is to one of the corners or points. Circumscribed indicates that the radius is across the flat surface, which is what we're showing in our drawing. So we'll choose circumscribed. And our radius distance is 3 inches. No, it wasn't. It was one and a half. Undo. Polygon. Eight sides. Center point. Circumscribed. Radius distance is not three, right? That's across the flats. That's the diameter. 1.5 or half that distance. Let me talk quickly about inscribed, circumscribed. I'm just going to go ahead and create a line here so we have a, a common starting point that we can work from. So inscribed and circumscribed polygons. I'm going to go ahead and draw two polygons. Exactly the same. The only difference is that one I'm going to make inscribed, the other I'm going to make circumscribed. So we'll pick polygon. Six sides. Pick the center point. First one's inscribed. We'll make this one one inch. Polygon again. Six sides. Same center point. This one's circumscribed. One inch. Well, they're not the same. They're clearly different sizes. So let me show you how this works. Let's draw a circle, center radius. Let me magnify this. We'll start the center right here, right? And we'll go to the radius of one of the corners. Let me change the color of this. Just so you can see it. Now take a look at how the center how the circle touches the objects. The inscribed, which is on the inside of the circle, touches at every point, every corner of the polygon. The circumscribed polygon touches in the middle of every flat surface. Big difference. You have to choose the right one or it's wrong. Let's do a quick aligned dimension center point to the point it's one inch center point to the midpoint all right that's where the circle touches one inch they're both one inch radius but one's to the point one's to the flat Really important to know the difference between inscribed and circumscribed. Okay, so we basically have our shape. Let me go ahead and erase my demo. Delete. And let's go ahead and throw some dimensions on. So it's easier to go and use the annotate button. Oh, before we go to annotate, let's change our layer to dimensions. Let's go ahead and now choose Annotate, and we're going to go ahead and choose and do some dimensions. We'll start with some radius. I'll pick the outer edge, 
radius, radius, uh, radius. Do you see a problem with our dimensions? There are three decimal places. There are four decimal places. Oh my gosh. We'll fix that at the very end. We'll show you an easy method to fix those. Throw in another radius. Now, we also need to throw in n dimension some of the linear dimensions. Repeat linear. Again, this I can right mouse click and it'll work fine. Right mouse click, repeat linear. And if you find that the dimensions are too far away from your drawing, you can go always and stretch them and shrink them in, or just shrink the uh, center lines initially and bring them in a little bit closer to your drawing. Like for example, this one would be a little bit far. What I would do is go back to the home, you stretch, cut it, right mouse click, and bring it in closer. Hit the escape key just to make sure everything's off. And I can do the same thing on this one too. Stretch this one, bring it in just a little bit tighter. Notice where I'm cutting. I'm taking the whole dimension, but I'm cutting it along the center lines. Pick the end point, just bring it straight down so I don't change the dimension. And there you have it. They're a little bit tighter now. Looks better. Need one more dimension, so we're back to annotate. Uh, need a diameter dimension for the inside circles. And I need an align dimension across the flats from the midpoint to the midpoint. And that's a little bit tight, so let me grip that, bring it back in just a, a hair so it's not running into the other dimension. So far, so good. We've got one final thing we need to do. If you take a look at the radius and the diameter dimensions on the outer edges, it says 2x. So it indicates that there's two of those. Each radius on the end is exactly the same. Each circle is exactly the same. So there's no reason to dimension all of them. I can dimension one and tell it that there's 2x or two times. So the easiest way to do this is grip it, right mouse click, and go to properties. There is a command called ddedit. You can type in ddedit. That will work too. But if you go to properties, under the properties we can go to primary units, dimension prefix. And in dimension prefix I can do 2 space capital X space. Okay. If I click out, left mouse click on the screen and let me move this out of the way. If I left mouse click on the screen, it updates my dimension, and then I can close it. Hit the escape key to get out of the grip. Same thing here. Grip it, right mouse click, properties, slide it down. Primary units, dimension prefix, two space, capital X space. Left click on the screen, notice that it updates, close the window, hit the escape key. That provides the setting. At the outset I promised you that we were going to do a quick way to, to change the precision. Here's the quick way. Go ahead and just grip every one of the dimensions that you see. Any dimension. All the dimensions. Go up and pick them. If you pick something else, how do you fix it? How do you deselect? You hold the shift key down. You're right. So now that I've selected all the dimensions, right mouse click, because we want to look at the options, and one of the options is precision. And I only need a two decimal place precision for these dimensions. So I'll select the precision of two. And in the future videos, we'll actually get into some of the dimension uh, settings, but realistically, uh, the dimension profile type settings. But realistically, to change your precision, that's the fastest way to do it. And in many cases, the drawings need to have both two and three and four decimal places associated with them. It makes it easy to change. Have a great day.